Hello everybody and welcome to uh, my little breakdown, my little analysis of uh, Game of Thrones Season 8's official trailer. This is the first proper trailer we've had for it. It might be the only one we get as well. But it's the last season of Game of Thrones. I've been watching this since it aired in Season 1. I'm so pumped but it's so bittersweet at the same time. I can't wait to see how it all resolves but at the same time I dread the idea of not having Game of Thrones to watch. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at this, this trailer, see uh, what details we can... Uh, figure out here. So the trailer begins here with Arya looking uncharacteristically scared, frightened, upset. You can see she's got a wound above her eye there. You know, she's been a real badass lately, but you can see something's gone down here. She is worried, she is scared. She's being chased by something, probably the undead. You see here a shot of Davos on the walls of what appears to be Winterfell, judging by the uh, the architecture there. I'm pretty sure that's Winterfell. He's always said uh, he was not much of a fighter, but, you know, he can get stuck in when needs be. Ah, oh, you're running again. Something's pretty bad. This scene, quite a few details here. So, got obviously, many. we've got Varys. It looks like he's down in the crypts of Winterfell, sitting with the women and children. It kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings, when... Uh, the women and children stay in the, the glittering caves while uh, the men fight and their sons fight. And, you know, obviously Varys, he's a great schemer, great political player, but he is a much of a warrior. So I, I kind of don't blame him for being down here. On the left over there, you can see Gilly with her son. And uh, you can tell this is the Crypts of Winterfell, that you can see a statue there. Um, I'm not sure if that's Ned's statue or just a Stark statue. Could be Rob. Um, over here, what makes me think that could be Rob is next to him there appears to be a statue of a wolf, a direwolf. So maybe it's Rob and his direwolf. I, I could be wrong, but just a guess there. It's also worth noting that Gilly's son was originally offered up to the White Walkers. And obviously they didn't get him in the end. But I wonder if they remember that and they, they still intend to take him. Um, but yeah, worth noting. I uh, freaked out again. You can see, uh, you can just make out things chase her. They look like undead, not white walkers. And I wonder if something has really freaked her out, like it, it's undead of people she knew or something who have been raised back to life. Here we her, see her looking a bit more confident with a dragon glass uh, dagger or spearhead there. Looks like, um, at this point in time at least, she is ready to take on the white walkers. April 14th, not long now. Lovely shot there of uh, some Greyjoy ships there, probably Eurons. And here we see uh, a, a Golden Company ship. In the last season, if you remember, Cersei commanded Euron to go and get the Golden Company to come and fight on her side. You can tell, obviously, by their golden armour that this is the Golden Company. And you can see there are banners of Greyjoy ships alongside them. This guy here in the forefront seems to be the leader. And, um, yeah, so it looks like Cersei certainly has a, a good standing army on her side at this point. Here we get to see Everything you did Dolores Ed, Tormund, and Beric Dondarrion. Now, Tormund and Beric, we last saw them on the wall when it got destroyed by the White Walker, the, the Night's King on the dragon. And I was kind of worried they died because we didn't really get a confirmation either way. But they're still alive. Beric's got his uh, flaming sword, great for taking out the undead. Tormund's still looking good, and Dolores with his sword drawn. He, uh, if you remember, was made Lord Commander after John left. Here we have Sam and Bran having a conversation, and Sam looks kind of nervous here, looks a bit unsure. I wonder if they're discussing um, the nature of John's parentage, the fact that he really is a Targaryen. And given that he's now banging Daenerys and they seem like best chums, I wonder if Sam is struggling to, to tell Jon that he really is a Targaryen. Um, I mean, not just that it's weird that he's been banging his aunt, but also the fact it could cause tension. I mean, if Daenerys realises that Jon is actually the one with the most claim to the throne as a Targaryen, you know, what's she been fighting for all this time? You know, has she done all this, come this far, just to let someone else take it? Lovely shot of King's Landing. And uh, with Cersei here Where at King's Landing, going? she's got a new frock. She's with Kyburn and the Mountain. And uh, looks like the remaining members of the Queen's Guard. 
And it's worth noting that down here in King's Landing, it still seems relatively sunny. There's no snow or anything. It's a little bit overcast, but um, it's still a, a sunny day by English standards. So, yeah, it doesn't look like winter has quite come that far south yet. Although, as we saw last season, as Jamie was riding up north, it did begin to snow. So, possibly we'll see some snow coming to King's Landing. In the books, it, it is snowing in King's Landing at this point, very lightly, but snow nonetheless. But, uh, so yeah, it's still looking smug, powerful. I'd love to hate her. She's a great character. And then, I really like this shot of, it looks like, the Unsullied coming into Winterfell. And a young boy watching, down, uh, looking down on them. It really reminds me of the scene in season one where I, uh, Bran, sorry, is atop a wall watching um, Robert Baratheon's soldiers come into Winterfell when he comes to visit. It's a nice callback there. I also think it's worth noting that uh, historically speaking, the Starks, uh, what, but when they were kings of, of the North, they they gave up that title of being king of the North. It, it, when the Targaryens came and they saw the Targaryens destroy, you know, the other parts of Westeros with their dragons and they bent the knee. And I do wonder if there's any tension here with, you know, the, the, the Northerners seeing Targaryens coming into the North with dragons and an army. Lovely shot here of um, Jon and Daenerys. Looks like they're riding into Winterfell with the Unsullied. And they just look like such rulers here, Do you know, they look like such a power couple. You know, they obviously lovers at this point, they don't know they're related I assume at this point, but you can really see they're thinking like, yeah, we are teaming up, we're going to rule this place. Great shot, really good. And then we see Sansa seeing dragons for the first time. You know, Sansa's always leaned more towards the kind of political side of Game of Thrones, not so much the fantasy side. She hasn't had a lot of experience with that, and you can see here, she looks, you know, amazed but also kind of concerned. You can tell she's not thrilled to be seeing dragons. And, you know, I can appreciate that she's been ruling Winterfell the past season and the arrival of Daenerys with an army and dragons, you could understand if she feels kind of threatened. And yeah, I wonder if there's going to be tension between her and Danny. And then we see uh, Daenerys visiting Jon in the crypts of Winterfell. I wonder, Aaron. you know, from her point of view, Ned Stark was the one who ended up destroying her family, you know, and usurping the Mad King and stuff. Um, but she also appreciates that the Mad King was mad and kind of had it coming. And I, I wonder, you know, this looks like it's going to be quite a nice moment between the two. I wonder if John is going to tell her about Ned, you know, and how, uh, what a great guy he was. And, you know, she'll get some insight there. So it doesn't tire. Doesn't tire, and we're seeing the human characters being very human, emotional, you know. Then here we see Gendry in a forge that, if you notice, is full of dragon glass. It looks like they have got all that dragon glass from Dragonstone. And um, yeah, as a blacksmith, it looks like he's overseeing the making of weapons with the dragon glass blades and stuff. So it looks like the armies of the North are gonna be pretty well equipped. They, you know, they're not just gonna be using regular steel. But hopefully we'll also get to see him do some fighting, because he's shredded, dude. And then here we see Jorah mounting up for the Battle of Winterfell. And you can see there, the sword by his side is Heartsbane, which is the Valerian steel sword that Sam stole from his father. It's the um, the Tarly sword. And it looks like uh, Jorah's got it now, and I bet Sam has given it to Jorah. Valerian steel, as you know, can kill White Walkers. And... Yeah, I I like the idea that Sam has given him this his his family sword because you know Sam's not much of a warrior. He knows Jorah is going to be better with it than he would be, and you know they he saved Jorah's life with the grayscale last season. So I like the idea that Sam has you know given him this sword. Also, it's worth noting Jorah's father gave Longclaw the the Mormont family sword to John. And so, so kind of Jorah had that, um, you know, ancestral sword taken, but now he's got a new one thanks to Sam. And then we see uh, Missandei and Grey Worm share a kiss, and again, it's you know this idea that they're, they're unfeeling, they're uncaring, you know, they don't have families, they don't care, but these people they do. Here it looks like uh, the walls of Winterfell. We see some quick shots of Jaime and Brienne fighting off uh, the undead, and. Uh, it's, it's worth noting as well, they both have Valyrian steel swords that were made from 
Ned Stark's greatsword Ice. Uh, Brian has Oathkeeper, and Jamie has Widow's Whale. And I really like the idea that the the Valerian steel swords made from Ned Stark's greatsword are now defending Winterfell, even if it's in the hands of someone like Jamie Lannister, who for a long time has been an enemy of the Starks. But I really like that, and and Brienne with Oathkeeper keeping her oath, protecting the Starks, and Jamie here. You know, I think this is going to be a real redemption point for him. I can appreciate those Starks probably aren't going to think much of him when he first arrived, but I think you know he's really going to get stuck in here. He's finally, you know, he's always been a great warrior, but he's always kind of been on the wrong side. And now it's like he's fighting a, a genuinely just cause, and I think that's going to be good for him. Back to King's Landing here. We see Cersei looking kind of upset. She's drinking again. I, I wonder what news she's had here. Um, it's, it's worth noting she was pregnant last season, and now she's drinking. I wonder if she lost her baby or something. Um, obviously, the prophecy did say she wouldn't have more children, that they would all die. So, you know, I really can't see her giving birth to a child in this season and raising it and stuff. There's just too much going on. So I wonder if she miscarries here. Lena Headey did an amazing job with Cersei. Lovely, amazing shot of the Dragon's Fight. This, this shot here it really reminds me of, um, you know, the cinematography in The Lord of the Rings. Um, the beginning of the Two Towers where it shows like the, the icy mountain peaks and stuff. It really reminds me of that. They're this, you know, this doesn't feel like television. Game of Thrones has always had high standards, but this feels like it, you know, it's like an epic movie here. See a shot of uh, Arya there, looking concerned, great one. I promise to fight for battle. the living. Another lovely shot, I love this. This should be a screensaver, man. Jon Snow under the weirwood tree that his father Ned prayed at. I wonder if this is, maybe he's learnt he's not really a Stark, or, or not Ned Stark's son. Maybe um, he's come here with Bran so Bran can show him uh, the truth of his parentage. Or maybe he's just come here before battle, you know, just to pray at the Weirwood, gain some strength. But this is where Ned went. We saw him in Season 1 uh, under this tree after he executed the Night's Watch deserter. But yeah, lovely shot. You know, magic is coming here. Weirwood, they're magic trees. You know, this is important stuff now. But it's a beautiful shot. I love the red. The Hound by fire, we know he's famously afraid of fire after his brother burnt his face. But here, he, he doesn't look concerned with the fire. He looks determined, he looks angry, he looks ready to fight. And, you know, that's how I like to see the Hound. He looks pissed off and determined. And really like he's overcome his fear, you know. It, it, his whole life, he's just been this incredibly cynical, nasty person. But it's like now he's really found some purpose, and I really like that. I can't wait to see. I hope we get to see her and uh, him and Arya have a reunion, you know, because last time uh, she left him for dead. But let's be honest, she did learn a lot from him. Jamie saying, you know, he swore to fight for living, and he intends to keep that promise. He deserted Cersei for the promise. Again, as I said, with him, you know, fighting for Winterfell, is Jamie's been this. You know, he's possibly had the biggest character arc of the whole series, and um, you know, it's like now he's he's had enough with the bullshit. He's had enough of Cersei. He's had enough of lying and scheming and family honor and all that rubbish. He's just he's doing the right thing, and he, he's he's gonna do it, whatever it takes. John, some action shots here. Nice. You can see John and Daenerys visiting the dragons. Doesn't look like an action scene or anything here. You can see there are some bones. I'd say this is just their food that they've been given. It looks like sort of cow ribs and stuff. Um, Sansa. So then uh, action shot here of Arya with the spear. I like this because it is kind of a callback to uh, in the House of the Undying when she had um, the training lessons with the wooden staff. I wonder if this is a spear with dragon glass on the end of it that she's fighting with. Um, I kind of prefer her fighting with a spear. I, I never really understood how she became so good with a sword when Jugo traded with the un in the un House of the Undying. She got rid of her sword, and you know she had a few lessons from Ciro Perel and that. But it never really made sense to me that she should be a great swordswoman. But as you know, they did pay a lot of um, attention to showing her staff training. You know that was really brutal. So yeah, I imagine she's pretty handy with a spear at this point. We've got Tyrion there. Just a quick shot of Tyrion. Um, we didn't see him this much in this trailer. Obviously, he's no warrior, really, so I, I can't see him being on the front lines, really. He was in the Battle of the Blackwater, and he was pretty proficient there, but, you know, I, I can't see anyone thinking 
yeah, Tyrion's got a fight in this, you know. Um, I think he'll be more behind the strategy of it all. I wonder if um, in the Battle of the Blackwater he came up with the plan to have the wildfire take out loads of Stannis' ships. I wonder if he'll think of something equally good for the Battle for Winterfell for taking out the White Walkers. I think his mind is going to be an important weapon in this uh, final season. And then a shot. Dragon. Fire. And then here we have, it looks like the Battle for Winterfell about to begin. You can see here, this is these are Tully forces. You can see... Um, um, Oh no, sorry, sorry, my mistake, not Tully, uh, Aaron forces, you can see the Aaron sigil as high as honour, the bird there, uh, they are the same people who, um, say Jon Snow in the Battle of the Bastards, the, the forces Littlefinger brought, and you can see here, um, we've got, um, Brienne of Tarth there, and, um, Podrick, her, her faithful squire, who recently is, we've seen him become better with a sword and stuff, so, Hopefully by this point he's got enough skill to be able to handle himself in the battle. But he's here with Brienne. I'm sure Brienne will look after him. I hope um, we get to see uh, Jamie and Tyrion meet Podrick again. They they were quite close, and you know I hope uh, they get to see their last goodbyes before they go into battle. But yeah, it's it's looking pretty tense. Jorah there. It looks like they're kind of the leaders. They're the commanders in this battle. And then the dead arrive, and you see this one horse leg. You know, we've seen the dead riding like undead horses, you know, it looks so cool. And yeah, the dead arrive, and it looks like battle about to begin. You can see Winterfell there. And I mean, I wonder what we're going to see. We've seen an undead polar bear before, raised by the White Walkers. There have been rumours of uh, White Walkers riding giant ice spiders. I think that was first mentioned in Season 1, and ever since then, I've really hoped that we'll get to see one. And if ever there was the time, then now now is that time. I, I'd love to see that. Maybe the CGI budget can't uh, go for that. But I, I really like the idea of <laughs> giant ice spiders. That would be so creepy. But anyway, it, it it's all about to... It's all about to... Game of Thrones, the final season. We all know. You didn't need to tell us HBO. We know. I mean, April 14th is so close now. And it's only going to be six episodes, but they're going to be longer. And... I don't know about you, but I am excited. I cannot wait. I, I just, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been, you know, since 2011. I've been watching this show. I've read the books. I love Game of Thrones. This really is like the end of an era for me. And I'm sure for many, many other people. I think it's going to be a bittersweet ending. I think plenty of characters we like are going to die. Um, the character I'm most worried about is Jamie. I, I love Jamie. I, I hated him in, you know, the first couple of seasons. But then that redemption arc. I really began to sympathise for him, and he's done a lot of terrible things, but I feel like that struggle of him trying to be better, I, I, I think they've done a great job with that, but I am worried that, you know, his final act of redemption will be sacrificing himself for the Starks. So, we'll see, we'll see, but uh, yeah, let me know in the comments, are, are you excited? Let me know who you think will survive, let me know who you think will die, who do you think will sit the throne at the end of it all, do you think the throne will even still be there? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, leave a comment. That really helps my channel to grow. If you're new here, then feel free to subscribe. See you next time.